welcome to the So Essential vlog. I hope you're all well. Today I wanted to share with you my thoughts on Me Made May. So if you haven't heard of Me Made May, it's an, an initiative organised by a lovely lady called Zoe and the idea is to improve your relationship with your handmade wardrobe. So it's a brilliant idea and thousands of people take part every year and this year I was quite excited to take part because in previous years I've only ever managed to wear me made items a couple of days in the month whereas this year I felt confident I could do a much better job. So all of the outfits that I'll talk about today are featured on our blog and you'll find the link to our blog below and also many of the patterns and fabrics are still available on our website and the link to our website is below as well. So my pledge for Me Made May this year was simply to wear as many handmade items as I could throughout the month of May and um, I'm going to just give you a rundown in no particular order of what I got up to, what I wore and then a bit of reflection on you know, how it's helped me with my relationship with my handmade wardrobe. So first up I'm going to talk about this dress which is, I call it my parrot dress. So this is McCall's 7591 in our lovely double georgette parrot and tropical print fabric so it's um a really lightweight um fairly sheer fabric so i lined it with our navy poly cotton um, and i just absolutely love this dress i just think it's perfect for so many different occasions so um in may the time that i wore it we had a really lovely hot day we spent the day at alton towers and then i had eight people round to my house for a barbecue afterwards so um it was a really busy hectic day and when i wanted to look nice because i was hosting at my house it, it but you know i was tired and it was hot and we'd been out all day this was a great dress to just chuck on with a pair of sandals and i felt nice and dressy but you know um i felt comfortable and cool as well and that's the great thing about the fabric combination the poly cotton and the double jaw jet together make a really nice cool comfortable um dress for the summer and for the warmer weather um for the barbecue i just wore it with some flat sandals um whereas on holiday when i wore it last year on holiday i used to dress it up with heels so it is quite a versatile dress um it's got an elasticated waist so it's really comfortable and as i say easy to just throw on um i really love the way the bodice over overlaps at the front. I really really love the racer back. That's one of my all-time favourite sort of designs um, for tops and dresses is a racer back. And then there's also a nice little slit at the front of the dress there as well just for an added little detail and an added little bit of interest. So yeah this was um, a really really good make from last year and I'm glad to see that I'm still just as keen to wear it this year. The next item I want to talk to you about is this vintage um, inspired simplicity pencil skirt and every single year as soon as the weather warms up I reach for this skirt, I absolutely love wearing it and I think pencil skirts generally can feel quite formal and maybe not necessarily easy to wear every day unless you're working in a, a formal office environment. Um, but this skirt, because I made it in our cotton sateen Ohio fabric by John Caldor, I think it just makes it feel far less formal um, and I do feel comfortable wearing this in quite a few different environments really. I wear it to work but I'll wear it to go out for the day as well. I can dress it down with a pair of flat strappy sandals and this simple black top. Um, and I feel really good in it um, but at the same time if I want to dress it up I can wear it with um, I made a bright pink cami top and heels um, that I can wear with it as well so it's a great make um, sadly the pattern has been discontinued now but there's a whole host of suitable pencil skirt patterns available on our site which you'll find the links to below and um, the fabric is no longer available in this particular design however there are alternative colorways and designs in exactly the same quality of fabric the John Calder or Ohio which I really really highly recommend it's kept its shape beautifully it's super soft um, it's just a really comfortable lovely skirt to wear and the fabric um, makes it beautifully and washes and wears beautifully as well so that's a definite winner for the handmade wardrobe every summer for me so the next item I want to talk to you about is my latest make which is this gorgeous simplicity wrap dress it's simplicity 8608 
So it's one of their new designs for this summer um, and I absolutely love this. I'm so comfortable wearing it. I feel really confident. I feel feminine but I don't feel too dressed up. Um, it's just perfect for everyday wear and that's something I really struggle with generally. I find it quite hard to wear dresses every day and feel comfortable in them. I think partly because I've got children and I'm sort of running around after them a lot of the time. I kind of feel a bit dressed up or a bit formal in dresses and I find trousers easier to wear but I get really bored of wearing the same old thing all the time so I'm really pleased with this dress because I do feel totally comfortable and confident in it and I don't feel too dressed up. Um, I made a couple of modifications so the sleeves on the original pattern are a full length flared sleeve and I modified them to finish just above the elbow and added a double cuff which I felt gave the dress a bit more of a casual relaxed feel. I think the flared sleeve for everyday wear might have caught on things and might have annoyed me a bit so I'm quite pleased with that modification. I also did have to just hand stitch the overlap together at the top here to prevent it gaping but that's absolutely fine. I think it still hangs really nicely. I feel really confident in it. I don't feel like my bra is going to be on show and I think there's just enough sort of skin visible here. The neckline isn't too low. I'm not revealing too much. Um, the other thing that's great about this pattern is it is an overlay as well. So it's not actually a full wrap skirt it's a full skirt underneath and then there's an overlay on the top to create the wrap look so it's not actually really a wrap dress and that's brilliant because you, when you're sort of walking along if there's a sudden gust of wind you're not worried about you know exposing everything showing your pants or whatever so that's a really good feature of this dress and then I chose to make the thicker waist tie there were two different waist ties that you could make for the dress and it was supposed to be the thinner one for this view but actually I chose to make the thicker one because um, I think the thinner one would have got a bit lost in the pattern and in the dress and also I, I quite like tying the thicker one at the side there and again I think that all helps with this illusion of it being a real wrap dress. Um, it's made in our black floral viscose fabric which was just the perfect weight and drape for the pattern um, and I'm just absolutely thrilled with it. I think I'll get a huge amount to wear of wear out of this dress so yeah it was an incredibly good make and I'd highly recommend the pattern as well. So the next item I wanted to share with you is this very simple t-shirt dress. So the pattern is Burda 6540. Um, I did modify the pattern fairly considerably though to get this look so the pattern is a simple slash neck design and it is also more loose fitting um, but I changed it to a round neck and then I sewed elastic in at the waist here to create that blues on effect and I also created a simple spaghetti strap which I knotted at the ends tied in a bow and then sewed onto the elastic here um, and I just think it's a really nice casual t-shirt dress that I can wear, you know, for most things. I feel comfortable in it doing the school run. I'll wear it to work sometimes if it's really hot. It's lovely and cool. It's really comfortable. And although we don't have any of this fabric left now, we do have a, a really good range of printed jersey fabrics that would work just as well. So the weather has varied quite dramatically during May here in the UK. We've had lots and lots of glorious sunshine, which has been amazing when I've worn all the sorts of strappy dresses and things that I've shown you. But we also did have a few odd cold days. And on those days, this little number came in very, very handy. It is my simple black scuba skirt and it was Simplicity 1370 was the pattern, which I modified to um, include an exposed zip rather than um, just a normal invisible zip. I just thought that I did a little interesting feature to the skirt and I wore it with this ready to wear um, jumper and some thick black tights. Now it might not be the most exciting thing in the world and when I was making it I did think oh you know it's a bit boring a plain back black skirt but actually this has been something I've worn time and time again and the fact that I wore it all winter and even in some of the months like May um, later in the year I'm still wearing it and it's still getting used it just shows what a great wardrobe staple it is and how important it is to have items like that in your wardrobe and it just feels really good that I've worn it so often. The fabric is the John Caldor scuba fabric that we stock. It's washed and worn brilliantly, it's comfortable and it's warm. So I 
highly recommend this pattern and just making yourself a simple black skirt it could be one of the most worn items in your handmade wardrobe if you just bite the bullet and go ahead and do it so in the same vein as the scuba skirt this item of clothing is also something that i'll wear on maybe the cooler days and it's a tilly and the buttons agnes top so it's a long sleeved simple t-shirt top um, that can be made in stretch fabrics. I've actually made this pattern four times so that tells you how useful it is and how much I've worn it that I just kept wanting to make the same thing again and again. You can make a shorter sleeve version as well, there is an option for that, um, but I find that in a sort of light, lightweight um, jersey fabric this top's really useful for those days where it's not quite cold enough to need a jumper but it's not quite warm enough to wear short sleeves. It's easy to just chuck on and I wear it usually with my black skinny jeans and then I put my Converse trainers on and a little leather biker jacket and it's a very very casual outfit I feel totally comfortable in it um, on the school run and running chores and those sorts of things but I think just because of the leopard print and the colours it just feels like quite a sort of glamorous twist I suppose to what, what is otherwise a very very casual everyday outfit and I think that's why I enjoy it wearing so much so I highly recommend the pattern and the fabric um, and just really making several versions of the Tilly and the Buttons Agnes top because I personally find it an incredibly easy to wear and useful thing to have in my handmade wardrobe. So this garment is my Sew Over It Pussy Bow Blouse which I made fairly recently and it has been incredibly useful to have in my wardrobe especially in the month of May because of the varying weather. Um, it, I made it in our viscose fabric which is lovely and cool and drapes beautifully um, but obviously it's long sleeves so you know on those days when it was a little bit cooler it was, it was a nice thing to have to wear, a nice option to have to wear. I tend to wear it with my jeans tucked in but it does look nice and tucked as well and it just hangs beautifully I just think the cut of it is really good um, I love the uh, bow for a little bit of retro glamour it's got some nice little details like um, gathering at the sleeves and cuffs that do it with a button and loop so all in all an excellent pattern the construction was easy the instructions were simple to follow I thoroughly enjoyed making it and I love wearing it as well and I was so impressed that I'm already on to my next sew over it pattern which you can see on the mannequin behind me which is the Zoe dress so I just wanted to share a little conclusion with you um, about me made May and sort of what I've found and how I feel about it and whether I you know how I feel about how I performed against my pledge I suppose so the first thing I think I want to say is that actually it was really good to sit down and reflect on me made May properly and make this video because it made me keep track of and look back at exactly what did I wear when did I wear it what did I wear it for and when I totted it all up I wore a me made or handmade garment 13 out of the 31 days which you know to some people might not sound like a huge amount some people are able to wear me made every day I'm not quite at that point yet but I do feel like I've come an incredibly long way um, even since last year when I only sort of managed to wear handmade items probably a few days in the month and 13 out of 31 days is, I've worked it out sadly it's 42% of the time so I'm, I'm very close to that tipping point where you know I could be wearing handmade garments more than I'm wearing ready to wear and that feels really exciting to be at that point um, I think doing me made may as well has sort of helped me to um, feel incredibly motivated about my dressmaking in that respect because I can see that I've, I'm coming uh, I'm progressing all the time and I've come a hell of a long way since I first started so I'm getting better and better at pairing the patterns and the fabrics together I'm getting better and better at understanding about what I like to wear and why I like to wear it um, I'm understanding what makes me feel comfortable and confident um, and how to sort of break some of those old habits that I'm in of constantly wearing the same old skinny jeans and starting to 
finally crack the nut that is the casual day dress which I personally just find so so difficult and have always found difficult but I think I'm finally getting to the point where I, I am wearing more dresses and skirts during the day and not just reserving those for you know the big nights out or the evenings out or whatever um, so all of that feels like huge progress and, and just makes me feel incredibly motivated and excited about where my dressmaking is going and I'd highly recommend the challenge to anybody if you didn't do it this year or you haven't heard of it before make a note in your diary for the end of next April and join in the fun because it's been an excellent way for me to reflect on things and just recognize the progress that I've made with my dressmaking so I hope you've enjoyed the video today please like and subscribe if you've liked if you like what you've seen and do remember the links to our website and our blog are below and I'll look forward to seeing you next time Bye.